Um, I want to uh, first thank Jocelyn for joining us today as ask for a better client. She's um, uh, she works with content. She's just an all around uh, shortly. Um, but just to give you a, a very brief thing, their website. Um, so before we kind of get into some of the, the features that we helped them build, the, the idea behind this presentation is that, you know, as, as the Embraco community, a lot of the things that we did um, may not be, you know, revolutionary to what can be done with Umbraco, but is putting an actual client, someone who actually uses Umbraco in front of the community so that you can see a little bit, um, you know, why Umbraco has been such a big part of their lives and how it's made things easier for them and in what specific ways. Um, so we'd like to kind of get through the presentation uh, as quickly as possible without, you know, speed reading through it um, so that we can leave a little bit of time at the end to ask some questions um, directly to, to Jocelyn uh, and myself, but she's probably a, a, a more interesting person to ask questions to. Um, so before we get into it, uh, I'm just going to send it to Jocelyn really quick to give an overview of Paylocity. Okay. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Zilk, and I manage the corporate website at Paylocity. And in general, Paylocity is um, a quickly growing U.S. company, and we offer cloud-based payroll and HCM solutions. And we like to say that we're not just payroll. We also offer benefits, talent management, time and attendance, and employee engagement solutions to pretty much every size company, whether it's small all the way to enterprise. And so if you're looking for a payroll solution, you know where we are. <laughs> Come and find us. Okay. So a little bit about uh, Marcel Digital. Um, we're an agency based in Chicago. We are an Embraco Gold Partner. We also offer performance marketing. So we sort of roll that into all the solutions that we build. Enough about that. So why the decision for a new website? Well, I'll, I'll give this to Jocelyn to talk through. Okay. So in a nutshell, we pretty much wanted to boil the ocean. Um, our existing presence just in general really didn't speak to who we truly were. And so we wanted to let our customers and partners know that we believe that people matter most and we're not just a payroll provider for our customers, we're their partner. And that we wanted to portray that better as a reflection of who we are, who we already were. And we weren't really doing that with the existing site. So we decided to rebrand. And of course that pushed us in the direction of not just defining our true persona, but also reflecting that back to our website. Um, and that included a new logo, a revised color palette, look and feel, and new imagery. And even with the imagery, we wanted to show our customers and our employees you know, throughout the site. So we wanted it to be a more a reflection of our true authentic self. Um, then after the redesign, we realized quickly that the, the flow of the site was a little chaotic. So we needed to kind of refine that. So then we could appeal to multiple audiences, which would be like our clients, our prospects, investors, and job seekers. And we weren't really doing that in the past. So it kind of gave us, you know, an opportunity to kind of step back and revise everything. Um, and then also the flexibility, just the, the content management system that we were using really didn't help us scale quickly and, and build the site efficiently. So why choose Umbraco? So what's interesting about Paylocity is that they they actually didn't have a content management system in mind. They just knew the experience that they wanted and what they wanted to get out of it and how they wanted it to scale. So from our perspective as the, uh, the partner, we wanted to make sure that we chose a content management system that, that really worked for uh, Paylocity and not the other way around, hence the title. Um, so taking in, into account all the things that they wanted, Umbraco is obviously great for integrations. They have a lot of integrations. Um, you know, they, they use marketing automation platforms. They have analytics. They have all sorts of, they have a, a job applicant API, which we'll talk about. Um, but there were a lot of integrations that needed to, to integrate um, with the content management system. And Umbraco, in our experience, has been absolutely fantastic for integrations. Um, it's scalable. So everybody, you know, generally knows that Umbraco is very customized and, and can be scaled very easily. There's a very simple editing experience. That's one of the reasons that we sell Umbraco is that, you know, it is in fact the, uh, the simple CMS. 
Um, and then of course it's open source. So there is no uh, ongoing exorbitant license fees. Uh, so with all these things, there were many, many other reasons as well, but these four reasons were really um, the, the reason that we recommended it to Paylocity, but also why um, they ended up choosing it as well. Um, so this is just a brief look at, at the hey, Kyle. Kyle, you're breaking up again. Your and your camera's on. You should probably turn it off. We can. Built it from the ground up I think he blew up. I think so too. All right. Well, let's let's give him a second here and see if he pops back in. Sorry, guys. Hope everyone's having a good day today. Everybody, it looks like Kyle dropped out. Yeah, he just totally lost his internet, didn't he? Yeah. Hang in there, Jocelyn. No, oh, no worries. <laughs> I can keep us rolling if you want me to talk about the next thing. I don't know if it necessarily requires a visual, but it's up to you or if we should just wait it out. Yeah, you can, you can continue if you like and you have it in your head. Yeah. Okay, um, the next slide was going to show like a, the old site versus the new site when it came down to the NAV. And when I think about the NAV, Previously, it was really chaotic. And too bad we don't have the picture, but it, it, it's irrelevant. Um, it was really, there wasn't a long-term strategy for content and everything was kind of added piecemeal throughout time. Oh, I think we might be back. Is this back? Am We're I back? back? Good golly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. It's like my internet is uh, choosing the perfect time to give up. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I'd, I'd say just leave your video off. It seems like when you turned on the video is when the problem started again. Yeah, you got it. You all will have to imagine my face. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, here we are. Okay, so um, as you can see, the old site on the left, uh, you can see all, the, I mean, it's just like a, a web of a lot of different content and everything was added piecemeal throughout time. There wasn't really like a distinct donor. The website changed hands internally quite a bit. Um, and there were a lot of different tiers for users to go through to even find content that they were looking for. And so on the right-hand side is the new and fabulous nav. And it's a lot less dense. You know, it's easier for users to kind of find what they're looking for and all these different audiences that we were talking about, right? The prospects and the clients and investors and the job seekers, everything is just really easy for everybody to find things through the, the shallow nav. And kind of the, the neat thing is, is that we really didn't get rid of a whole lot of content on the old site, but we just reformed everything. So it fit within like a really easy to find structure on the right hand side. Next slide. Hello? Kyle. Hey, Kyle, Jocelyn, to, Jocelyn, to fill the space, uh, just curious, how long I'm were you here? Dealing? I'm not sure oh. what's going on. How long were you Sorry, dealing with the uh, how long were you dealing with the site on the left and what was the the final straw that made you decide to uh, to move and and how long were you looking at at different CMS options as well as I'm just curious. Sure, sure. So the experience on the left was all the way like we didn't have a website presence for quite a while and then you know we were still a smaller company. And so 
you know, we had just set up like a bare bones site. I wasn't with the company at the time, but you know, they set up a bare bones site and it really didn't have, you know, like a scalable scope ahead of time. So then when we were rebranding, it was definitely an opportunity to say, you know, like we need to throw the baby out with the bathwater on this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then when it came down to the solution, I, uh, Marcel really kind of guided us. You know, I had worked with other content management systems in the past and they kind of guided us into the, the, the user-friendly content management system. And it was a, a great choice for us. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yep. Um, and so how did Umbraco make our lives easier? So in the past, we did have a content management system, but it wasn't necessarily really modular. So if we stood up a, let's say it's a brand page or something along those lines, we really had to apply unique HTML to the, to the page. And we had to make sure it was working responsibly. And every single time that we needed to request an image from the creative team, it was a different size. So there was like no continuity and it really took a long time to stand up a page. We had to do a lot of QAing on multiple devices. And then sometimes it still wasn't perfect. So there, were, there was a large margin for error with the old site. And then enters in Bracco, right? So now I can, if I'm standing up a product page, um, I can collaborate with my internal stakeholders. I can stand up the structure, you know, through this collaboration, I can say, okay, so you want to talk about product features, or you know that you want a video on the page, you know that, you know, you're going to want a picture of our product on the page. So I can literally kind of just go to our library of modules and, and put them on the page and we can drag and drop them and, you know, figure out the order that makes sense for the user to consume the, the content. And then we're not stuck with this rigid template every single time. Like I've worked in other content management systems. And then on the back end, once we set up the structure of how we want the page to be, I can hand that off to my content editors or to my designers and say, okay, so, you know, can you fill these, these blocks up with content? And they know, you know, the length of the content and they know the sizes of the content. So everything's consistent throughout the site. And then to the benefit of Umbraco, you know, the, the environment and the content management system, the framework is consistent from page to page, no matter where I go. So if they want to add anything on any page that I know they're not gonna break anything necessarily. And the, the, the user flow is gonna be consistent throughout the entire site. So it gives me a little peace of mind knowing that the user's experience, they can't break anything. I mean, like that's really the, the essence of that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Next slide. And so this is just an example of one of the features that we have with an Umbraco, and this is our resource library. And it's not rocket science, you know, to Kyle, you know, to his point before, you know, we're not necessarily doing anything that anybody else hasn't done probably before, but we've found ways for Umbraco to really work for us. And so on the left-hand side is our resource library and anybody can traverse there by clicking on resource library, but from here, they, the user can sort, they can search, they can sort by our products or by the type of collateral that they're looking for, whether it's an ebook or a webinar or a podcast. And it will then, you know, of course, sort the, the pieces. And then on the right-hand side, we have built a module that will allow us to either build a page or drop in specific resources onto a page. Um, so our, our library is constantly growing. You know, right now we have 640 pieces of collateral, but like every day we are contributing more and more content to the resource library. So it's really important that we have an efficient way to manage this and also post things quickly. Next slide. And so this is our back end of the resource library. And the first picture at the top is really just we can post a new post. Let's say I'm posting a blog. I can go in there. I can add it with my modules very easily. And then I can categorize it. I can say it's a payroll blog. So I have two different categories. And then on the picture below that, that's kind of a snapshot of what the module looks like. So I can say, I want three blocks next to each other. And then I can say that I want it to be payroll blogs and I can drop this on my payroll page. And so users are getting, you know, exactly what I want them to consume. 
and that's relevant for them. Um, so I guess at the end of the day, you know, like how does this benefit us? Um, you know, it gives the users the content that they're looking for or not even looking for, <laughs> it's just there, but it gives the, the time for content managers to work on things that are more meaningful. Uh, we don't have to worry about outdated content throughout the entire site. Um, and then the users aren't having to go know to go to the resource library to go find uh, relative content to payroll. Instead, we're bringing it to them where they're looking for it. And then finally, you know, we have a lot of internal linking for SEO benefits. So that helps us establish link equity and an SEO friendly architecture. And then this is an example of our applicant tracking system. So in short, we needed a way to integrate Umbraco with Paylocity's own recruiting application. So of course, we're not just a provider, we're our own customer to our own product. And so we have all of our job listings within our apps. So Marcel was able to connect to our API and feed our job openings onto the site dynamically. And in the back end of Umbraco, uh, we're able to select which department jobs are associated with and then display them onto specific pages. So if HR comes and says, hey, we want a new page just for corporate jobs, we can add corporate into our listing and it will automatically pull all those corporate jobs as they've classified them in our backend and list them onto a page. So it helps us just, again, you can go to the next slide, but it's kind of the same story. Um, it saves us time and lets, lets us focus on impactful projects. Um, it keeps all the job listings up to date without any intervention and it helps job seekers find what they're looking for quicker. So, you know, over and over, we're just saving time to focus on things that we really need to focus on and is not working harder, but smarter. And then, Last but not least, uh, we are working on a Pardot workflow integration. And so we do have one in place right now, and that's where it says the old way, but we use the Umbraco form builder, and then and th these are for collecting our leads primarily. And we pass the data from Umbraco to a Pardot form, and then the leads get ingested from that Pardot form. But to do this, we have to go into the Pardot form and we have to look at the source, we have to collect every single unique identifier for every single form field and then document those and then copy and paste those into uh, Umbraco and then hope that everything works and then QA it and find like where their errors, their errors are because copying and pasting, you know, it, it has a lot of human intervention to sync up our forms to Pardot and that just leaves a, a larger margin for error. And so the new form builder on the right actually reads in Braco, the form there, and it reads the Pardot form and then brings it all into Umbraco and says, okay, match the first name with the first name and let, match the last name with the last name. So it helps us stand up forms a lot quicker. And we don't have to QA, or we, we rely upon that as giving us less time for QAing, but we still QA no matter what. And then um, in a nutshell, you know, like I only highlighted just a, a handful of components that we've implemented, um, but it's been a really easy tool to help us scale quickly and accurately and consistently for our users and internally. So it, it, it's been a really good recommendation on behalf of Marcel. And they've helped us, you know, build all these modules to help us save time too. Thank you for covering for me, Jocelyn. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I don't know what's going on. I mean, I guess I'm I'm sort of glad it happened with somebody who knows the presentation. But um, um, so uh, we want to open it up to Q and A. Like I said, we have about five minutes. There is one question that came from John Parsons. I think it's uh, directed at you, Jocelyn. What work did you do with your external users slash customers to assess their requirements and how did this influence the choice of the CMS? Um, that's a great question. Uh, we definitely did, you know, survey a lot of customers 
externally, but I had come on board after that was done. <laughs> so I kind of missed that, that piece, but there, there was a lot of research externally before I came on board. I wish I had a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's tough to, on the, on the Marcel side, um, you know, we obviously recommended it to them. And so when we took into account everything that they were looking for, we knew that Umbraco was the right choice for them, but we also, um, they had a, a, a design agency that we worked with as well um, that had done some research as far as how to like rebrand. I mean, they went through a full rebrand when we built the new website to the point of like, they had to get a crane to change the sign on the side of their building. So it's, you know, it was all happening at the same time that we were working on the website as well. So, um, Ravi asks, what was your favorite change in terms of the old to the new? Um, my favorite is the level of collaboration I can have with internal uh, requesters. So if somebody comes to me and says, hey, I need a new page that we can like work live within our test environment and I can stand up a page and we can like literally hash that out before I even send it to, to make sure all the components that are necessary are on the page. And then I can hand that off. So it, it really removes like a large level of, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg. And like everybody agrees upon what we're looking for before we start putting a lot of time into writing copy that won't fit a space or creating images that don't work with the, the feel of the copy. So um, I think that's probably my favorite part. And then also one more thing is I brought on a, a web developer and I trained him so easily. Like <laughs> it was so quick. So he was really able to adapt into the, the content management system. It's like, he's awesome to begin with, but just quickly, I think that's one of my favorite pieces too. Yeah. Um, John asked, what did you go for in the end, Cloud Umbraco or your own install and why? So. We ended up going with our own install, um, Cloud and Braco. Paylocity is a is a very large organization, and we actually utilize um, another partner on the server side to make sure that they're up and running um, 24/7. Um, so ultimately, we ended up going with the uh, the custom install for from that support perspective. Um, we needed to make sure that we had support in every time zone um, uh, and not just the the European time zones. Um, one uh, final question from Bill. You mentioned an easy authoring experience while not letting users break the appearance. Was this achieved with multiple doc types and or was there resistance to using grid editor more? Um, yeah, so um, it was sort of a mixture, right? Like we at, at Marcel, like I'm sure a lot of you as well, like Umbraco can give an insane amount of flexibility, or it can also create a walled garden for people to work within. So we sort of had to talk with the Paylocity team about what's the right balance of, of you know, allowing people that flexibility, but not too much flexibility to the point where we create a website that's a Frankenstein after two or three years. So really it's more with multiple doc types. Um, and we, we did sort of shy away from, from using the grid editor on some of those pages because a lot of the content that they put on there is repeatable. So we didn't really want them to you know, utilize the grid editor for every single page that they were gonna create. Um, but there, there certainly wasn't um, you know, resistance one way or another, uh, for sure. It was just more like we kind of came up with a customized version that fit nicely for Paylocity. I hope that answers your question. And feel free to steal that, Brian, of course. <laughs>